Ever wondered if it's possible to build a house without breaking the bank? Newsflash, it's not. But in today's video, we unveil the full breakdown of build costs for the home that we just completed in Little Rock, Arkansas. Along with a few money saving tips that helped us stay just right under 200,000. But quick heads up, the numbers that we're discussing in this video are all just tied specifically to the project that we're discussing today and our personal experience. Don't use the numbers that we're gonna be spitting out here as your magic eight ball for your construction costs because probably won't line up. Let's get into it. So for this construction cost breakdown, we've broken the whole process entirely into eight major steps. So to kick it off, let's go ahead and talk about lot cost and site preparation. So lot cost, that's gonna vary widely based on where you are, what type of lot you're looking at. Is it an infill lot or is it pretty much raw land out in the country? But for us, our lot was an infill lot that we got. Basically what that means is it's in an established area and it just happened to be a vacant lot just sitting there because there was an older house in it that got torn down by the city and we had an opportunity to buy it. So that's an infill lot. And for infill lots, there's usually a lot less development cost. If you're buying a massive acreage plot or something that's very wooded, also just depending on your market, you may be in a much more expensive area than we are in Little Rock, Arkansas. So our lot did not cost us that much. Uh, some other things that we grouped into this category were things like the survey. We had a few little kind of tree bushes that we had to clear. And then we did have to run a new sewer service as well to our build site. So in total, this section came out to around 20,300. Not bad. So we got the lot, it's ready to build. The next thing we're working on is the foundation. Now for our foundation, we spent $13,095.96. There were a lot of different factors that went into this. Obviously, all different foundations are going to have different specs to them. You've got different types of foundations even. So for us, our foundation did involve things like bringing in fill dirt, block work, uh, just because of the terrain of the lot. In this foundation cost, we're including things like the labor and materials for the footers, the block work, the slab, finishing of the slab, garage, flat work, all of that stuff. The next section involves your framing, roofing, and windows. And now here's a pro tip. You wanna make sure your windows are ordered by the time you were pouring your concrete. If not before. If not before, <laughs> exactly. Depending on the lead time in your area. So you wanna find that out. And the reason being, the windows go in right after the framing is completed. And I know that's different in uh, different parts of the country, but where we are in Arkansas, the framers install the windows. Yeah, you wanna have your windows before, you know, the framing starts. So it's right there on the job site and they can get that installed for you. So in this section to do like the framing, the roofing and the windows, obviously the framing included both the labor and it included our framing like material costs. Mm -hmm. There were some things that we did that were a little bit more expensive. Like our house was a two story. So we had a floor system in that. So there are just different variables. And obviously the biggest thing is gonna be how many floors is your house and how large is it? So in total for this section, our cost came in at around $45,082.56. And that included, like uh, Nicole said, the framing, cost of the windows, as well as cost of getting the roof on. And we did a screw down metal roof. So after our house was framed up, we had the roof on, the windows in, we jumped into kind of those more mechanical items, which is section four. This was our HVAC electrical and plumbing, and this came out to just over $32,000. A quick note with the plumbing, the plumbers are actually one of the first mechanical people you'd have to hire because they have to run underground plumbing if you're doing a concrete slab. So mm -hmm. they have to run their plumbing before you pour your, you know, you fill it, pour your fill dirt and get it covered up and pour your slab um, if you're building on an elevated slab. So at this point, if you are watching our total, we have completed four sections. We do not at all have a pretty house at this point. And we have already spent 
over half the budget. So it definitely starts to add up quickly. I'd say one takeaway that I have is uh, props to anyone who is a builder or who goes through the process of building a home because I think you can testify to the fact that it's a lot harder to write <laughs> these individual checks mm -hmm. for 20,000, 15,000 than it is to just go to the bank, sign a few papers and get a loan. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a lot more nerve wracking. You know, you just see the account balance is just going down. And you're like, oh, man, are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? <laughs> oh, it's real. The house is framed up. We've got electrical wires, plumbing pipes all over. We've got a roof on because it's not leaking. The windows are in. You know, everything looks good and solid. This is my favorite part of the build process. Just seeing this in this stage. So the next section is your insulation, your drywall, and your painting. And at this point, it moves really fast. Um, you're gonna get to choose or decide what you wanna put in your exterior walls, in your ceiling. Um, you've got a lot of choices when it comes to insulation. And I mean, the price just varies at whatever you want. Um, drywall is pretty standard, um, you know, so, so is painting, uh, I'll put it like that. But in total, uh, for our build, this is what we spent. We spent $15,005.30. So the next big ticket item is the interior finishes. This is when I have the most fun and Kachi has probably the least amount of fun. Because this is when everything starts getting cute. I can pick out floors, cabinets, and Kachi's writing checks and can't wait to get to the finish line. Everything's getting cute, but everything's getting expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so in total for interior finishes, we spent $39,118.40. This included a lot. Some of the things were like our interior and exterior doors, cabinets for both our kitchen as well as our bathroom vanities, mm -hmm. um, things like all of our trim material, countertops, countertops flooring. Because we did a two-story that include uh, stairs, so we did solid oak, wood, threads on the stairs so mm -hmm. it included uh the tile for the bathroom floors tile showers shower doors mirrors all of that thirty nine thousand one hundred and eighteen dollars even the kitchen appliances were in that total so i don't feel like it was a bad for the amount that went into the house but it was a big big cost it was our next section is the exterior finishes of the house and this was my pride and joy we did a combination of things we did vinyl siding on this the board and batten style and we chose a brand that's really good and looks really good on the house i think um we did a uh, brick uh, brick veneer and stucco and i mean it turned out amazing but the cost to get all of this done uh, came out to twenty-seven thousand and thirty-three dollars ninety-four cents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. You know, at the end of the day, you want to get good materials that make sure your house is looking nice through every kind of weather, every kind of light. We had a lot of people just taking pictures of the house and just admiring it, <laughs> driving and by slowly. Slowly, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I'd say it was worth it, but just know exterior finishes they cost a lot of money all right and really the last section was landscaping landscaping super important because that that is what you know brings the house makes it look lived in makes it look finished it's like accessorizing your outfit yeah because without the landscaping you know anything it's just on still looks like it's under construction so Doing the final landscaping is what brings it all to life. And for this, I knew I wanted to invest money in it. Um, and so we spent $6,170.97. And that included sod for the front, for the back, river rock stone on the sides, flower beds. Um, we it, privacy fenced the backyard. Privacy fence too, yeah, all of that. And then we also put the driveway in that section as well, because that was one of the last things that we put down just so that it stays nice and pretty. That's pretty much it on the direct building construction costs. Mm -hmm. 
So if you've been staying with us, our grand total for this project came out to $198,599. Now, obviously there were some miscellaneous costs that we didn't factor into this just because they're kind of extra things. You want to touch on those briefly? Yes. This doesn't include miscellaneous um, things we had to pay for, like uh, interest on the construction loan. Uh, we had to pay for a toilet because you cold you have to get toilet from the workers we had to pay for um what, so the, many dumpsters yeah dumpsters disposal crap utilities because we had to run the electric um and the water you know to test stuff with the plumbing uh, there's a lot of little costs a home depot here a home depot there <laughs> machine know. rentals yeah machine rentals trailer rentals um, so those were just kind of extra costs we wanted to mention mm -hmm. um, that we didn't factor into this for build costs purposes, but just know that there are going to be some extra things that you would want to budget for. Now let's touch on some of the big ways that we saved. Yeah. So, I mean, it helps that I'm licensed and experienced a builder. So um, I've got a crew of guys that I trust that, you know, do various stuff that I'm able to get together to get the stuff knocked out in time and on schedule and then budget all that good stuff so that helped a lot but you know obviously not everyone is a experienced builder so right and i think that the big thing is if you are not a builder you can in theory build your own home yeah but it is going to take significant amounts of time and it will be a significant planning headache that's the yes. main thing that I want you to take away from this is yes. like we want to share all this information, be upfront about our numbers, but obviously know that like we were able to do this because of Kachi's experience and that allowed us to save a lot of money because we didn't have to pay a builder or a general contractor to oversee all of this for us. True. But in order to do that, you and I both spent like full time hours managing this project. So it wasn't easy or something that we could have done part time by any means. Exactly. Now, another thing that we did to save money is because of our experience with remodels and renovations, we had a lot of the skills and the tools on hand to tackle some small items ourselves. So things like installing cabinets or um, after inspections, sometimes you get little punch list items that have to be you know, added to the home or fixed before you can get a pass. All of those things we were able to take care of ourselves and save a little bit uh, from you know subcontractors charging to come back out and add something. If you've never done home projects or like if that's not your field, if that's not your focus in life, I mean, and you're trying to build your house, I mean, I'm just gonna tell it to you straight. I mean, it's gonna be hard because one, you're not even gonna know if things are getting done right. And I gotta put it to you, like subcontractors, contractors out there, they're trying to get the most money for doing the least amount of work, <laughs> period. And they can tell if you've got experience or not. They can tell if you know how something should be or not. And so, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people run into, you know, situations uh, like that and getting just like shady work done. And it's just something to be aware of, you know, I just want to point it out there for, you know, the, the people who are trying to, you know, do this stuff on your own. A hundred percent. I mean, there were even contractors that we hired and we have the experience who ended up getting fired because the work just was subpar. So it is definitely important if you do decide to try and tackle this process on your own to do as much education and learning on the front end as possible. Now, remember, before you do any of this, the first real step to building is figuring out if you can afford to build. It's a major thing that a lot of people don't think about when you're building you're most likely going to take out a construction loan right and with those construction loans you have to make your monthly interest payments now if you can't financially afford to make those interest payments as well as your mortgage payment and any other monthly obligation that you have it's not going to be possible period the lender is not going to lend you the money and also too you having a down payment is required usually 10 15 20 percent i'd say the lender would require for them to even give you the construction loan so mm -hmm. you have to have this to even begin 
So that's why you have to look at your finances. Absolutely. And these construction loans vary dramatically from a typical mortgage. So if you are interested in kind of exploring this process more, make sure to check out the video that I have linked on the screen where I break down construction loans and what you can expect. Kachi, thank you for joining us today and sharing your lovely building experience mm -hmm. with me and with the world. I'm Nicole Nark, real estate broker, helping you learn how to build, buy, and invest in real estate, and I will see you in the next one.